Hi there. What's the limit of x times sine of 1 over x as x goes to infinity? In a previous lesson, we evaluated this limit with x approaching 0, and that limit was equal to 0. I'll leave a link in the description to that lesson if you're interested. This time, we're not talking about 0, we're talking about x going to the edges of the universe, x is going to infinity. What's this limit? Well, you may recall the definition of a horizontal asymptote. If this limit exists, and say it's equal to some number c, that would mean that this function is getting arbitrarily close to the horizontal line y equals c as x approaches infinity. So if the limit was equal to c, and maybe this is a coordinate plane, and this is the line y equals c, then as x gets really big, our function might look something like that, getting arbitrarily close to that limiting value as x goes to infinity. And that limiting value at infinity is called a horizontal asymptote. All right, let's get to it and evaluate this limit. An obvious complicating factor in this problem is that inside the sine function, we have another non-trivial function of x. We have 1 over x. And perhaps in the sine function, we'd rather just have a single variable. Instead of 1 over x, we'd like it to just be sine of x. But it isn't. But hey, we could just give 1 over x some other name, and maybe that would help make this a little more clear how to proceed. So maybe let's say that 1 over x is equal to theta. We're just defining this new variable theta. We're going to say it's equal to 1 over x. And then maybe I can re-express this limit in terms of theta instead of x. And perhaps by getting rid of that small mess in the sine function, I'll see a way that I can proceed. So I'll just write that this is equal to the limit of, let's proceed with caution, ignore the x for a second, sine of 1 over x, what is that? Well, 1 over x is equal to theta. So where we had 1 over x, I'll put my theta. And what about x? What is x? Well, if theta is the reciprocal of x, that means x is the reciprocal of theta. So x must be equal to 1 over theta. OK, so I have sine of 1 over x, which is sine of theta. And I have x, which is 1 over theta. Now the only concern is what's under the limit. What is theta approaching? Before, we had x approaching infinity. Now my variable is theta, so what should theta be approaching? Well, we're not trying to change the limit, right? We, we still want to make sure we have the same limit. And so let's look over here. If x is approaching infinity, what's theta doing? Let's focus on this first equation. If x is approaching positive infinity, then 1 over x is approaching 0. In particular, it's approaching 0 from the right. Since x is approaching positive infinity, 1 over x, those are going to be really small positive numbers. So I might write that the limit of 1 over x as x goes to positive infinity is equal to the limit of theta as theta approaches 0 from the right, which is why I have that plus there. Theta is approaching 0 from the right. And of course, both of these limits are equal to 0. Again, theta is approaching 0 from the right when x approaches infinity because theta is 1 over x. If x is approaching infinity, 1 over x, those are really small positive numbers. And so they're approaching 0 from the right. That means that this limit is equal to this limit in terms of theta with theta approaching, that was a terrible arrow, let me redraw that, 
with theta approaching zero from the right. Because as x approaches infinity, theta is approaching zero from the right. So these limits are equal. Okay, now I'm almost at something I know. What I'm gonna do now is say, well, I've got sine of theta times one over theta. I'll just write that as a single fraction. So sine of theta over theta. And so this is the limit as theta approaches zero from the right of sine of theta divided by theta. At this point, you should be done because in calculus, this is a limit that you should know off the top of your head like the back of your hand. That limit being, let me even go ahead and write it in a different color, the limit, the limit of sine of a thing, let me just write sine of a thing. The limit of sine of a thing as the thing approaches zero, the limit of sine of the thing divided by the thing is equal to one. All right, that was a little sloppy. The limit of the sine of a thing over that thing as the thing approaches zero, that limit is one. You gotta know that. And so that's what we've got here, effectively. We've got the limit of sine theta over theta, so sine of a thing over a thing, as theta approaches zero. Now, theta is approaching zero from the right, but this limit that you should know tells us that the limit's gonna be one, whether the thing is approaching zero from the left or the right. So if theta is approaching zero from the right, well, this limit is definitely going to be equal to one. The limit of sine theta over theta as theta approaches zero from either direction is one. And I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving this famous limit if you are interested. So this means that this function, x times sine of one over x, has a horizontal asymptote at positive infinity of y equals one. As x gets really, really big, this function gets arbitrarily close to the horizontal line y equals one. That's information that can help you in graphing the function by hand. Horizontal asymptotes can be different at positive infinity and negative infinity. So if you were asked to find the horizontal asymptotes of this function, you would look at this limit with x going to positive infinity. Then you'd also have to look at the limit as x goes to negative infinity. In this case, they're very similar and the limits turn out to be exactly the same. If x was going to negative infinity, then theta would be approaching zero from the left. And like we said, no matter which direction theta is approaching zero from, this limit would be equal to one. So this function happens to have a horizontal asymptote of one as x goes to infinity and as x goes to negative infinity. So that's the limit. Pretty fun, a pretty cute little method to do this. The limit of x times sine of one over x as x goes to infinity and as x goes to negative infinity is one. And in order to do it, the really important thing you gotta remember is that the limit of sine of a thing over the thing as the thing approaches zero is one. So much for me, there's nothing here to hold on to. Do I want to yield to